Lesson 8.2b, Two Angles and Their Included Side. So before we start for a quick review, this is a protractor. It's a tool for measuring angles. This is a compass. It's a tool for drawing circles and arcs. A unique triangle is formed when the sum of the measures of the two shorter sides is greater than the measure of the third side. So if we had these line segments A, B, and C, and this was 3 inches, this was 4 inches, and this was 5 inches, we could say A plus B is greater than C. These measures will make a unique triangle as a closed figure because these two, 3 plus 4 is 7, that is greater than 5. And if the sum of the two shorter measures is less than or equal to the measure of the third side, no triangle can be formed. If A plus B is less than or equal to C, that means no triangle is formed. An included side is a side of a polygon between two given angles. Here we have A, B, and C. So this is angle A, this is angle C, this angle right here, and this angle right here is angle A. Segment AC, that's in between this angle and this angle, so it's segment AC, is the included side between angle A and angle C. A protractor has degree measures on the outside and the inside of its curve. And there's a hole in the center of the straight part that is used to line up the vertex of an angle. So that, where this hole is right here, that's where the vertex would be, see? And we would line the hole up on the vertex, and then we would put this line lined up on our base, and we can measure the angle. This is a 120 degree angle, we would use the inside scale here. See how there's a 60 up here, but there's a 120 here. Because this angle is facing right, we're going to use the inside scale. Now, this scale is opening this way. It's facing left. So we're going to use the outside. So that is a 120 degree angle using the outside scale. We can use a ruler and a protractor to draw triangles with two given angle measures and an included side with a given length. So it's telling us the angles need to be 40 degrees and 60 degrees and the included side length is 5 inches. So we take a ruler, we draw a 5 inch line segment like that. So that's going to be the base. Then we take our protractor and we measure a 40 degree angle. We put this right here. We put the circle right there on the vertex and where the 40 degree mark is, we put a little mark so that we can line it up and use the straight side to make our ray. We do the same thing for this side. So when we did this one, we used the inside measures, okay? We're using the inside measure of the curve here. Now we're going to have to use the outside measure because it's facing left, the opening. So we're going to come here, and we can put a little mark showing where the 60 degrees is. Then we use the straight side to draw our ray like that. And we have an angle included side and angle, angle, side, angle. See that? So we just made our first triangle with a five inch included side. We have a 40 degree angle, a five inch included side, and a 60 degree angle. That's our triangle. We can make a second triangle. We can make a triangle with angles 50 degrees and 70 degrees with an included side that is three inches long. We draw a three inch side and we take our protractor and using the inside measures, the inside measures right here, and we find out where 
50 degrees is lining up our circle in the straight line at the bottom, and we mark that 50 degrees. We can put a little mark there, and then we use the straight side to make our ray. Then we measure, mark, and draw a 70 degree angle. So now we're going to be using the outside measures along here because it's opening to the left. So we line this up with the circle and with the straight line. We can put a mark where 70 degrees hits right here. And we use the straight side to draw the ray. And when we are given two angle measures and given the length of an included side, we get a unique triangle. So this is a unique triangle and this is a unique triangle. It has this included side is 5 inches. This included side is 3 inches. This one has a 40 degree angle and 60 degree angle. This one has a 50 and 70. They're unique to each other, aren't they? They have different side length. They have different angle measures. We've made unique triangles. When we measure, mark, and draw an angle, we can draw the line with an arrowhead to show it continues in that direction. And we can see that the orange ray will continue eventually intersecting this green one, won't it? It'll eventually intersect it, and it'll form a unique triangle. Here, we can see that the orange ray will not intersect the green ray. A triangle will not be formed. There's no triangle. They'll continue on in those directions. We won't have a triangle. Now take a look at this one. We have an 80 degree angle and this ray is continuing up in this direction with the arrow, but this is just a two inch segment. And we have a three and five tenths inch base here. Well, since the orange segment only has a two inch length, it will never intersect with the green ray of the 80 degree angle. It stops right there. There's no arrowhead. That's no triangle. Here we have the same base of 3 and 5 tenths inches. Now we have a 35 degree angle and we have a 3 inch line segment right here. Well, we can see the green ray forming the 35 degree angle will continue and then intersect with the orange 3 inch segment to form a unique triangle. If a triangle has the angle measures 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, is it a unique triangle? Let us find out by drawing it with a 4-inch base and a 6-inch base. We draw a 4-inch base, we make a 30-degree angle and a 60-degree and a 90-degree angle. So that's a, that's a square corner, isn't it? This one is a right angle, and that means this is going to be a right angle. Well, if you take a look at them, they're just larger or smaller versions of each other. Since more than one triangle can be drawn with those angle measures and have corresponding sides of different lengths, it's not unique. This side corresponds to this side. This side corresponds to this side, the green to the green, and the orange corresponds to the orange. Since more than one triangle can be drawn with those angle measures and have corresponding sides of different lengths, it's not unique. We're finished with lesson 8.2. We're moving on to 8.3, which is about cross sections. 8.3a is cross sections of a right rectangular prism. Remember, a unique triangle is formed when the sum of the measures of the two shorter sides is greater than the measure of the third side. Have a wonderful day and join me for the next lesson. Bye.